Hey guys. In this video, we'll delve into AMD's strategic unveiling of the RX 7600 and my thoughts on their ultimate aim. Spoiler alert, it's not about leading in performance. And AMD is well aware of this, as evidenced by their last minute decision to slash the MSRP. Let's dive right in. Starting off, let me quickly cover some of the details about the new card. The AMD Radeon RX 7600 is a middle tier graphics card, belonging to AMD's newest RDNA 3 family positioned similarly to the NVIDIA's RTX 4060 series for 1080p gaming. This card is equipped with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. An interesting aspect of the RX 7600 is its architecture, which is grounded on the same RDNA 3 design that powers the high-end RX 7900 series. But unlike the RX 7900 series that utilizes the 5nm chip, the RX 76 employs 6nm chip, which is essentially a generation older due to its DUV lithography process. The RX 7600 features an advanced dual issue rate compute unit, which boasts over a 17% IPC enhancement compared to the earlier RDNA 2 CUs, alongside the second generation of ray tracing accelerators, which are claimed to boost ray intersection performance by a significant 50%. Additionally, it's the first AMD GPU to incorporate hardware acceleration for the AI, with the two AI accelerator units per CU. The RX 7600 also heralds the inclusion of the hardware accelerated AV1 video encoding and the novel Radiance display engine, which supports the latest DisplayPort 2.1 and HDMI 2.1A ports. The Navi 33 features two shader engines, 32 RDNA 3 compute units, 2048 stream processors, 64 AI accelerators, 32 Ray accelerators, 128 TMUs, and 64 ROPs. The memory subsystem sees a minor update, the same 8GB GDR6 over 128-bit memory interface, but clocked faster at 18 gigabits per second, backed by a faster Infinity cache memory. In many ways, it's them saying, we'll learn these things in our newest cards, how do we improve our existing low-end cards without spending much more money and making them more expensive? Which, to be honest, is not a bad approach. Just as usual, the general public was expecting more for less. Let's get into some benchmarks and see what that translates to. For our test bench, we'll be using the standard AMD 7700X system, maintaining consistency across all components, except for the GPU. This allows us to isolate the performance difference attributed solely to the graphics cards. Also, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. Let's start with Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p. Here, RX 7600 is about 11% faster than 6600 XT on average FPS and 10% faster on 1 percentiles. At the same time, 6700 XT is about 7% faster than the latest card on average FPS and 1 percentiles. At 1440p resolution, the gap between 6600 XT and 7600 is only 45%, while 6700 XT is 28% faster than 7600. This is a significant difference, especially considering that there seems to be a big push to get rid of the 6700 XT cards by the vendors. New cards go as low as 300 US dollars, and some of them come with a bundled game. For example, on eBay, you can pick them up even less than $300, which is certainly intriguing. Regardless, let's get into the next game, Shadow of a Tomb Raider at 1080p. Here 7600 is around 13% faster than 6600 XT and is about 12% slower than 6700 XT. Interestingly, there is a linear scaling in performance along all four lower end cards. At 1440p resolution, the gap between bottom two is 10% and between 7600 and 6700 XT it's almost 20% in both average and 1 percentiles. If we look at the recently released 4060 Ti, it surpasses the 7600 by about 33% in average FPS and 28% in 1 percentiles. However, it does come with a significantly higher price tag. Next is a much lighter title, World War Z, and here at 1080p the results are rather intriguing. Both 6600 XT and 7600 have essentially identical results, and 4060 Ti is only 5% faster too while 6760 is taking a 15% lead. The outcomes at 1440p and 4K resolutions closely mirror these, so we won't delve into them. Next, let's kick up a notch and turn on some ray tracing. Here in Formula 1 2022, at 1080p with ray tracing enabled and all the graphical settings cranked, we get almost playable results from the RX 7600. 
while average FPS is okay, the 1% lows will introduce stutter, and in driving game like this, it will be distracting. With upscaling enabled, the frame rate becomes considerably better, and even 1%ers are now high enough for smooth gameplay. The difference between 7600 and 6700 XT is still very significant, even though the 7000 series cards are supposed to have considerably better ray tracing performance. And in this example, Nvidia just blows AMD out of the water, with both ray tracing performance as well as upscaling. It is pretty clear where this card sits in terms of raw performance, but what is happening below the cooler? For this we ran TimeSpy Extreme on loop to check out its power efficiency, and as you can see here it pulls at times slightly more power than 6600 XT, which seems rather disappointing. But if we look closely it also has much larger range, where it frequently pulls less power. This provides us an average result of 157 watts. While this is still higher than the more power efficient Nvidia card, it is marginally lower than the previous generation 6600 XT. The power consumption on its own does not tell us the whole story, but if we look at this performance per watt, we see 21% improvement over 6600 XT and it even beats out 6700 XT by 14%. This leads us well to the conclusion, and I'd like to discuss the strategic brilliance behind this card. It appears that AMD might have a substantial inventory of previous generation cards to sell, and they need a bit of a catalyst to do so. Releasing RX 7600 into the market generates greater interest in the entire lineup. Those in search of budget-friendly options will gravitate towards the best value cards. Once the stock of existing cards dwindles, they'll likely discount the 7600, much like they've done before, leading to a swift sell-through. As it stands right now, if you're seeking for a high-performing 1080p card, I'd suggest a 6700 XT. However, if AMD reduces the price of the 7600 to below, let's say, $242, it would become an excellent alternative. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out the links in the description below for more information on any of the items covered in the video. We hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more, and we'll see you guys in the next one.